So tell me about this partnership and why you love each and every, because I feel like we've been talking about this before. I probably, I mean, I personally have used each and every deodorant for years. Um, I am a huge proponent of natural deodorant. Like I, I, you should not be putting aluminum under your arms, go natural. Your body wa wants to use natural deodorant. Like some people like to say like, oh, well, natural deodorant doesn't work. And I like to say to them, one, you're using the wrong natural deodorant, one. And two, you have to let your body adjust to it. So I've been using each and every for years. I mean, it's paraben free. It doesn't have like synthetic fragrances. Um, you can get unscented, scented. The scents are so nice. So I've been using it forever. And so when this partnership came up to make my own kit, not only get it discounted because it's a bundle, but then also give my followers a discount code on top of that. I was like, absolutely no question. Like I want my followers, like I care about my followers. I want them to use natural deodorant and this stuff works. So like if you've tried all of the ones in the past and you're like, it doesn't work for me, you just, you're using the wrong one. So you have to use each and every, it's so good. And um, actually <laughs> I have these little cards right here. I, Molly, so I signed uh, a thousand of these cards um, and wrote notes. I would probably say I'm like 300 of them. Like um, I really, really, really wanted the people getting the kit to feel like they got something from me um, cause this is just important to me. And I, I want them to feel that way too. So I've been like zooming with people who get it being like, how do you like it? Like literally zooming with my followers. Oh, excuse me. And even Molly, Molly signed probably like 50 of them. Oh, I didn't ask her to. She was like seeing me do it. And she's like, I want to do it. And then even at one point I had to be like, honey, you need to leave room for me. Cause she was like writing all over the cards. But so, yeah, so I, I love it. And I'm passionate about people using it. And it works. If you don't already use it, you should be using it too. I should be using it. Does, does Molly know like why people want, want mommy's opinions on stuff like this and that she's an influencer and was the bachelorette and all that stuff? No, she doesn't get it yet. Like the other day I was looking at, uh, what, was, what was I looking at? Oh, um, uh, a friend of mine, her name's Clea. She's part of the uh, Instagram or she, her company is the home edit and they do like the rainbows on their uh, page. They like love decorating in rainbow like theme and Molly loves rainbow. So I like opened up the home edits Instagram page. It was like showing Molly and I was like, Molly, this is Clea, our friend Clea, her Instagram. And like, she loves rainbows just like you. And she's like, how are you on her Instagram? Like she doesn't even understand. Okay. She knows mom has an Instagram because I talk about it sometimes, but yeah. she doesn't like even understand what Instagram is or how it works. She will soon though, I have no doubt. <laughs> I'm sure they get earlier and earlier, right? Do you have a favorite um, each and every scent that you use? Do you use the unscented or do you like the spin? I love the scents. Like I know some people, I have my father-in-law using the unscented because he doesn't, he's a person who just doesn't care for scents and he loves it. Me, I love the rose and vanilla. I mean, maybe it's the bachelorette in me. I don't know, but, but I just love that scent. It's so, it's like, I love the scent of rose when it's very subtle, when it's like subtle and fresh. When it's rose and like very over the top florally, it smells like synthetic, right? Mm -hmm. But this is like just such a nice, fresh scent. It's so wonderful. So that's probably my favorite one. And I have read before that it does take your body like a second to adjust sometimes when you switch mm -hmm. to natural deodorant. How long, like what is that period you should give yourself to get would, the adjustment going? So I would say like the initial adjustment for me probably was like a month to two months. I never smelled like the, what I will say that like using it right away, I never smelled, right? Like deo the, it's deodorant. It takes care of the, the smell of body mm -hmm. odor. Um, I think for me, the sweating part is where you need, your body needs to detox your body, our bodies, you know, growing up in the nineties and not even thinking about what we're putting on our skin. Right. I mean, no natural products, like wasn't even a thing then, you no, know, everything was the most like artificial that it could be. They were going the other way. I feel like. Exactly. It's funny. Like my mom used to take me to like a co-op to get groceries and like a co-op is like very, uh, just like natural, everything. Like, you know, we never had sweets growing up. Like it was always like a fruit leather is what they were called, not mm -hmm. like a fruit roll up. So my mom was, used to always do that, but it like wasn't a thing back then for the majority of people. So we've been using aluminum for so long that our body is so used to that, that they don't, mm -hmm. our body doesn't understand. Like hundreds of years ago, people weren't putting aluminum under their armpits. You know what I mean? But your body naturally, naturally will stop sweating less and now I, I barely sweat at all. Like your body just adjusts on its own. So you need something that's really good to handle the body odor. That's each and every. And then your body will also adjust with time. You just have to give it time. And I stand by the fact I've tried every single one under the sun, I feel like. And I really, truly believe each and every is the best one. 
There you go. There's your testament. Um, <laughs> let's talk about Katie. I feel like you were a champion of Katie to be a bachelorette or continue her journey in Bachelor Nation when Matt's season was airing. Is that correct? Absolutely. I've been a super fan of Katie since day one. I love that she just took a stand against bullying. And I think that's so hard to do on that show because on that show in the past, it's been frowned upon to talk to the lead, right? To talk to the mm -hmm. bachelor or the bachelorette about the drama in the house. It's been frowned upon. Usually if you do that, you get sent home or you mm -hmm. get dragged into something or, you know, so what I love that she didn't care about that. And she was like, I'm, I'm going to, because it's the right thing to do. And this is getting out of hand and he needs to know what's going on. Like, I just feel like the way she went about it was so mature. It was commendable. I think it could have gone the opposite way for her. And she probably knows that like everyone going on the show pretty much at this point has watched it before. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? So I'm yeah. sure she knew that there was a chance that would backfire in her, but she wanted to put the mental health of others first. And I think that is amazing. I love her. And what do you say to contestants who would say, oh, she was just like not or trying to get attention or the women who get so offended by the women, other women or men, whoever it is, whether it's bachelor, bachelorette, yeah. it's filling in the lead. Because if I was the lead, I would want to know what was going on. So why do people get so offended by that? I don't know. Like there's this thing in, in the bachelor world, like focus on your own relationship, right? But mm -hmm. like, I remember even saying as the bachelorette, like, because I knew what was going behind the scenes when I was on The Bachelor. So when I was The Bachelorette, I would say to the guys, like, be real with me. Tell me what's going Like, I wanted to know. Like, I flat out told them, I don't think it really aired, but I would say to them, like, if something's going on the house, come and tell me. I want to know, you know? Yeah. Um, so I don't know why it's so, so frowned upon. Yeah. I wonder if it's more producer frowned upon because then like everything Probably. gets out there. You know what I mean? That's true. Uh, that's true. They want it to like happen organically maybe. I don't know. Um, or they like the drama in the background because we all love watching it. It's why we yeah. tune in. It's why it's such a popular show. It's fun to see. I mean, it's sad to say. Not when it gets so bad as it did on Matt's season where it was like mental health, but like a little like drama. Like we all, we all, that's why the show is so popular. You know what I mean? But I think yeah. the difference with Matt's season is it really was reaching a point of like extreme bullying and affecting people's mental health. And I think that was why Katie saw that and was like, nope. I'm going to do something about that. So I love her. I can't wait to see like her put the guys in their place and like not stand for anything. And like, if guys are mean to each other, I guarantee she's going to be like, get out of here. I don't stand for that. And I think she's going to be an amazing bachelorette. I agree. And this season will also see Tasha and Caitlin sort of guiding her. Is that something you felt like maybe you would have benefited from as a bachelorette having past leads like right there or were you good? Yes. Oh my gosh. Yes. It's almost... It's funny. I wonder, I guarantee that they didn't get time with her off camera because if they got time with her off camera, their advice might be a little bit different. Um, so that would be interesting if they did, at least without, without like a producer around or something. But yeah, I mean, just to have somebody who's been through it before, you know, like I think like I give the same advice to every bachelor or bachelorette if they ask for it. I always say the same thing. I say, figure out who you like right away like day one and ignore them, like ignore them. And you need someone in the moment telling you that. So it's probably good if like Tasha and Caitlin were there, hopefully to give her these, uh, this advice in the moment you forget. Right. Yeah. But like ignore them because they're going to be there. Right. They're going to be there week two, three later. And not, I mean, don't completely ignore them. I'm not saying play hard to get, but like, don't focus, don't put all your eggs in one basket. Cause that's what I did. I put all my eggs in two baskets in my season. And in the end, I feel like that really hurt me because I wasn't able to really get to know some of the other guys that maybe if I had given it a little bit of time, something could have happened, you know, but I sent them home because I was so laser focused on like my top two. So mm -hmm. that's my advice for every bachelor. And I'm sure Tasha and Caitlin gave her just the best advice. The whole I was, I was going to ask you, what's one thing you wish you knew before you started that you know now, but is it that? It's that. It is that, I think. Yeah. Um, and, and the other thing I wish I knew is not to take it so seriously. Like mm -hmm. I, it is serious. You're looking for a husband, right? But I took it so like crazy seriously that I don't feel like I had fun. Mm -hmm. Like I was just so, this is my life and I need to find love. And I was just like so laser focused on that, that like I didn't enjoy when we were in Istanbul, Turkey, and I didn't enjoy the experience the way I really should have. So 
but the thing is, it's easy to give someone that advice. It's like the type of thing, it's like giving kids advice or teenagers advice. They're not going to listen. They need right. to live and grow up and experience it. So it's almost like, I wish someone gave me that advice, but at the same time, I don't know that I would have listened to that advice. Fair. Um, yeah. Obviously, Caitlin and Tasha, I think great dynamic. It's going to be cool, but that does mean no. Chris Harrison, I just came out that he also won't be back for Paradise. Oh, um, really? Yeah, it's, uh, really? it just came out, yes, last night. Um, do you have any thoughts on that situation? Do you, do you think they need him or? I think that Chris needs what Chris needs. You know, I think if anything, Chris has a lot of say in whether or not he comes back or not, you know, like I'm sure I know his relationship with the producers and the executive producers, and it's a very close relationship. This isn't like a, you're not coming back even though you want to, at mm -hmm. least I don't think so. I think Chris is probably saying like, this is, I need to work on me. And I need to like step back. I need to educate myself. I need to grow. I need to take a step back from my own mental health. I think for mm. Chris's mental health, he probably needs to take a step back because um, of what happened. Uh, so I guarantee that's a collaborative decision. I don't think like a lot of people out there are saying, you know, don't watch The Bachelor and The Bachelorette right. because they're not having Chris on. I don't think it's that simple. I think that Chris doesn't want to come back yet. That's my opinion. Mm. Um, I think Chris will be back. I do. I, I, I do think Chris will be back. I, you know, Chris made a mistake, a big mistake and needs a lot of growth. But I know, like, I feel like he'd be committed to that growth to come back. If they ever called you to host an episode or help host a Bachelorette season or be a rotating Paradise host, because we're hearing it's going to be like rotating celebs oh, and really? stuff. Yes. Would you ever go in and dip your toes in the hosting? I know you hosted on E and stuff after you stopped. Yeah. I mean, yes. Like, it'd be super fun, you know? But then again, like, I, my immediate reaction is like, oh my gosh, yes, I'd love to. But then again, I'm such a, like, I hate being away from my kids. Mm -hmm. So I don't know if I could do it like I don't like if it was like a one day thing or even like a week not even a week a two day thing maybe <laughs> like I've never been away from my kids more than one night yeah. maybe two nights actually two nights so I don't know <laughs> we also know on this season Blake Moynes is going to be coming back after his Tasha uh Kate Claire stint on the show and I know last season Heather came back and that was kind of a disaster do you have any thoughts on the like bringing back the old contestants and throwing them in he was in Claire Tasha I didn't see he was in Claire Tasha okay and I need to, I've seen every season ever since I was on the show. And like, I- You missed a good I, one. I feel like it's like rude that I haven't seen their season. You know what I mean? Like they're, they're my girls and they're part of my little bachelorette family. I need to go watch. I'm going to like make it a priority to watch. Um, it's just when that was happening, we were in the middle of a cross country move. So I just, yeah. things were crazy. Um, but people coming back. Um, I don't think people should come back. I think at that point you've had sort of the opportunity. I mean, whatever. If you want to come back, sure, come back. The problem with people coming back is that you've already been on the show and you understand the attention that you get on the show. You understand the celebrity that you get from the show. And you're kind of like, whoa, this is cool. This is awesome. And yeah. I feel like your motivation for going back on would be disingenuous at that point. You know what I mean? Like, if you really liked this person, especially if it's a person who was like in the bachelor world way in the past, you know, around for a while, then I feel like, you know, make your move right after the show or make the right. make your move while the show's airing. And maybe people are, maybe they are like sliding into people's DMs. I'm yeah. too old to be saying that. Um, <laughs> <Right>. But <laughs> maybe they are. And then like, they can't get a hold of them or whatever. I mean, who knows? But it's just so much better when it's just fresh, you know, yeah. like that's like the magic of the show or something. I feel like it, it can never really work the other way. Cause either they're talking before the show started and they already have a relationship. And that, in that case, the person shouldn't have been the lead in the first place, probably. <laughs> um, or maybe they want to see what, whatever. I mean, I don't know. People like it's messy. <laughs> yeah, it's messy. Do what you want, but it, it is complicated when they bring in past people. We saw it. I mean, Nick Vile made it pretty far with Caitlyn and they had like a whole thing, but it's also like if she wanted to be with him, they should probably shouldn't have been, she could have been with him on the side. The same thing with if Blake, I don't know. It's interesting. It's good drama, but I sometimes think it's like a little forced when they bring people back. Yeah. If this, I will say this, like I'm trying to put myself in that position. Let's just say when I was asked to be the bachelorette, I was kind of talking to somebody on the side um, from another season, right? Mm -hmm. I wouldn't turn down the opportunity to be the bachelorette because I kind of been talking to somebody on Instagram. Right. And then right. if that person ended up coming on the show, like 
that would be cool. I'd probably be excited about that, but I'm not going to like totally ignore the other relationships. So I guess. I guess that's the only answer. You know what I mean? There is no good answer. It's like either yeah. way. I don't know. Um, you mentioned your big move. How is Nashville? You did say, you know, maybe a little bit of a difficult transition at first. How are you guys doing now? Well, I'm currently planning our move out of Nashville. No, I'm kidding. Oh. <laughs> My allergies are so bad right now. That's part of the reason I was late for this interview. Um, like my, I just can't think clearly right now. Oh. Like I living in California, I mean, I had allergies a little bit when I was a kid, but living in California, you're so spoiled. It's so dry there. And with the ocean, like nearby, I didn't have any allergies. Like I, like if I like had a little sniffle in the spring, I'd be like, Oh, my allergies here. Like I have to pop my ears every 30 seconds or I can't hear properly. I'm so stuffed up through here. I'm surprised I haven't blown my nose yet during this conversation. Sorry, that's gross, but they're <laughs> so bad. So dealing with that, I'm going to go see an allergist. So that's been hard, but the transition in general has been hard. You know, like I knew it would be hard. Like I knew when we made the choice to move. It wasn't going to be easy. Everything mm -hmm. I did a lot of research, everything I read, like said it takes up to two years to fully acclimate to a new place. Um, and especially moving during the pandemic, that really, like Kevin and I keep saying, our two years really just started, right. even though we've been here for six months, because we can't count that six months where we were stuck in our rental house. It's not even our, our place, you know, it's other people's furniture and things, and it doesn't, it's like an Airbnb, you know? Um, so once we like get into our own home, like we feel like that's, that's really when it starts for us. Because at the end of the day, like I could send you to like a beautiful, like this is a beautiful house, right? Like I could send you to a beautiful house in a beautiful place, but if you're there six months and you have any of your things, except for like your clothes and your suitcase, and you're, like eventually you're yeah. going to just say, I'm going to go home. You know what I mean? So like, yeah. I'm excited to make our home. And I feel like once we do that, it's going to be so much better. And I think I'm going to be working with you guys to do like a reveal of the house. It's really yes. excited about it. It's pretty. Very exciting. <laughs> how is the house? What I saw you posted a little sneak peek recently. I know your followers are watching your journey. How is like the construction process? Is that more stressful than you thought it would be or better? Well, we bought a house, like a spec home. Like we bought a house that's being built and we're in contract for it, but we don't own it yet. So it's okay. not like buying a piece of land and then building from scratch. So if anything, the hard part has been like, not being able to like make changes or like, you know what I mean? Like the builder was great and let us make a bunch of changes, but like, it's a construction zone. We can't just show up cause that's a liability for him. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? So like, I'm like, Oh, I want to go see the house. And I, so I feel like just the waiting game has been the hardest. Um, but at the end of the day, it's going to be so beautiful and I'm excited and, um, yeah, it's just, I can't wait. But then I heard once we move in furniture right now is like backlogged, like lumber's backlog, <clears throat> excuse me, furniture. I'm like, are we even going to be able to furnish the place? We might be like living on like blow up furniture for a while because nothing's in stock. It's going to feel so sweet when it's finally done. Whenever that is, you're going to appreciate everything so much more. So much. So, 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 so much. It's, my girlfriend lives here in Nashville and they've been in Airbnb for three years looking for their home. They finally just bought land in our building. And she would always say to me, I was like, how do you like Nashville? Because she moved here. And she's like, I like it, but I don't have my own home yet. Like my space and, and my home, it doesn't matter if you have a 500 square foot apartment or a 10,000 square foot home. Like home is home, wherever mm -hmm. that is. Like one of my favorite places I ever lived was a 500 square foot apartment in Hollywood. And it was, I always said, whenever I went home, like all my things were there and I was so proud of all my things. And whenever I went in, it felt like a warm hug, like just a cozy little space and um, it's just weird being in a, like a place that's none of your stuff, none of your furniture, like other pictures of other people's kids on the walls. Like, I'm like, I'm just, I just want to be home. And I know that's like a very first world problem to have, right, but, but it, you know, I real. know I'll just, I'll feel more uh, when I have that. <laughs> I know they're young, but did the kids like Nashville? Molly misses her swimming pool. <laughs> <laughs> so the kids do like Nashville. Actually, Riley thinks our house, like our rental house is Nashville. He's like, like whenever we're out and about, he's like, I want to go home to Nashville. Oh. We're like, but we were in Nashville. Like he doesn't understand. We keep trying to explain it to him. Um, Molly misses the ocean. Molly's a fish. Like my daughter, Molly, she loves to swim. So she misses the ocean and her, the pool. And we're hoping maybe we'll have a pool at our new house, but we don't know. So it's been a little bit of a adjustment for her. And they also have allergies. So they've been feeling like a little, ugh. And so we're trying to get those under control. So, but I've heard allergies are like worst ever this year for everywhere. So Everything's hoping, the worst ever. <laughs> I'm hoping, I know. I'm hoping it's not this bad always. So we'll see.
Um, I saw on Instagram you hanging out with Jana Kramer and Sinead Grimes. So you got some like cool Nashville mom friends going on. How did you guys all connect? Yeah, well, Jana, we I knew in LA. So Jana, okay. Jana would like come to she came to my daughter's birthday party. I went over a place for wine, but like we like just started to become friends right before she moved to Nashville. And I remember when I would like meet up with her at the farmer's market in LA, uh, she would be like, you've got to move to Nashville. And I'd be like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's funny that now we've moved to Nashville. Um, but Jana's the best. She's the type of person who, like one of my favorite things about Jana is she is the type of person who invites people in. So mm -hmm. like if she sees somebody, you know, I actually posted a quote on my Instagram the other day, like be the type of girl that like makes room for another girl to have a seat at the table. That's the type of person Jana is. Like she will just like see somebody over there by themselves. Like, hey, come hang out with us. We'll make room for you. Like, I love her. Um, and Janae, yeah, I just met here. We like, you know, connected on Instagram and I went up to her house and uh, visited my kids and her kids and we hit it off and she's awesome. So yeah, it's, Jana and Shanae actually live pretty far away from for me, it's like a 30 minute drive, um, which is a bummer. I'm like, oh, should we move up there now? Um, but, but yeah, they're great. I'm super, super grateful to have them here. I mean, Jan is obviously very open about everything she's going through and in life in general. And um, have you been a support system for her and everything going on in her life? I try to be, you know, I check in with her and whatever she needs. And I, you know, she's a resilient person, you know, and she has the best heart. And I just keep telling her like, the best is yet to come, you know, like I just, you know, I know the best is yet to come for her and I will be there for her whenever she needs something. And, you know, we'll have wine nights and girls sleepovers. <laughs> I had my first sleepover in a long time with her the other day. I was very oh. excited. I was like, Oh, we could like have wine. We were playing Yahtzee on her floor. I'm like, this is the best. <laughs> um, but yeah, I know she's going to, everything's going to turn out. It's going to be brighter, tough days ahead, but brighter days ahead. Mm -hmm.